Okay, hello. Uh, welcome back. Welcome back to to these uh, wonderful courses that Sergio and his team uh, is doing. Um, okay, uh, this is uh, I'm Dr. Juan Cristina again, a professor of virology here at a Facultad de Ciencias, University of Republic in Montevideo, Uruguay. And so, in last last class we gave a panorama of, you know, what uh, this world of viruses, uh, or this world of viruses is. And now uh, I would like to to show you um, really uh, what uh, we think um, is a very, very interesting topic is, you know, how viruses uh, evolve, you know? And so this is, I think, is very interesting, you know, from all the, the topic you will discuss with Sergio and his wonderful team in the Instituto Pasteur de Montevideo. So, you know, how to do with the physics for the molecular, and of course for the nowadays with all the advances of, of computational uh, virology. So for me, it's a pleasure to to try to introduce you just a few things, you know, and how, how to think about in this in this in this world and so um so the what we are going to see now is that uh, uh the principle how the viruses uh evolve as uh, everything evolves in the biosphere and so we know uh this is life uh in planet earth from, from the history and uh, one of the things that the compared to to you or maybe other colleagues that come from other fields, is that in, in biology, in some, not all, but, but some of the viruses, you can see evolution in real time, you know? So we are so fortunately working uh, as, as virologists that we can see the evolution happening now in real time. Okay, you cannot rely, although we don't have fossil records of viruses and all that we can see today so again um you will have these beautiful structures that for sure Sergio and all of you know more than me and how the things are done uh, here you have spike protein the streamer and um, you know other molecules and this is beautiful pictures that that you can construct i i don't know how to do it uh and so Let's see, you know, how this is, why, why, why this is so interesting, okay? So, um, when the thing that I will say, this goal all became with this, uh, with this guy, you know, um, with Charles, Charles, Charles Darwin, because uh, the mechanisms to, to understanding is that, uh, so you have at that time, this is all, this is so. If you go to that time uh, when Charles Darwin the origin of the species, that that control say with with Lamarck and all, but but that but that time and so this is a joke that, that at the end, um, so the theory made by 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 Darwin is more comprehensive and more uh, related to the reality we we observe today. So the Darwinian. Uh, evolution which is uh, really important to to know I think uh first of all the notion of time you know uh viruses as a species evolve through time so there is a continuous evolution all the time one of the important aspects that I think this guy is, is that evolution is not a question of one individual, it's the question of the population. And so how the frequencies or what we know, the alleles, he didn't know that by the time, you know, how many, many years to know what the, so with the spec of characteristic traits, but uh, now we know in the molecular way, but in, in the way that it is a population that goes to a selection and so 
the survival is related to the best adapted to that particular ecosystem, you know? And so this is uh, also that we can um, uh, adapt this, this thinking, you know, how a, 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 a population is uh, facing um, selective forces that are related also to the ecosystem they live and the, how changing the ecosystems make a powerful force for, in this case, a, a, a virus also uh, to adapt to new things and uh, to a new environment, you know? And so I think that this um, three process that we also see it here in the in the in virus populations, you know, that are related. So the of course the capacity of reproduction, so the forces of natural neutral selection that make a powerful force for selecting those that can be more adapted to this particular ecosystem and how the since the ecosystems evolve, the selection forces or new sele new forces uh, arise in this continual changing, and uh, so the people that is adapted, and the also one important thing is that the variability of the descendant population. So, um, at the beginning of the pandemic, we have type A SARS-CoV-2 that caused COVID nineteen. Then uh, some, uh, some other uh, 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 mutations, substitutions that are course in the spike protein make an advantage of the virus to be a more a capability of spread, to be more contagious. So uh, that's it's a selection process, okay? So the question is that adaptation of the new environment through forces of selection that gives you a uh, progeny that are more well adapted. Some are small change, some are big change, and some small change can be also new phenotype of viruses. For instance, now we have a very big problem in our region so for, for an emerging influenza virus, which is called H5A1H, I would say that it has to do with the proteins. And the, so in the the hemagglutinin, if you have, um, so where you had to, to cut to be this subunit, uh, you have a, a polybasic um, site that gives two different phenotypes. The one that you don't have a very basic uh, site, they have a low pathogenic influenza virus, for instance, in, in avian species, particularly for us, important in domestic uh, birds. But if you have it, they give a completely different phenotype that is high pathogenic influenza virus that is lethal. So this was acquired by evolution of its own uh, viruses. So, Virus evolution is the constant change of a viral population. And from viral population, the selection process that it goes in the ecosystem, an ecosystem is to go to try to infect a new species, you know, ecosystem is inside each of the patients that, that you have, there is evolution, there is evolution outside, and there is evolution inside, there is evolution inside the cell. There are many forces, and so, that it, you have to think on that in a continuous process through time and how so how many variables you had to take to take care but pretty much uh this idea you know of how a national selection also shape the virus population and in the case of with our last class remember it shaped the virus population and sometimes it shapes the history of the host population too. Okay, so um, 
So what are the drivers of the virus evolution? So now how viruses are uses mechanisms, they, they use all mechanisms that, that we know, but there are some things that you have to keep in mind when, when studying evolution of, uh, of viruses, okay? The large numbers of progeny. So here you have, a, this is a circle two, you know, in a cell surface, it can be more than that too. So the large number of viral progeny. So, okay, you can have, for instance, uh, we have viral loads in hepatitis C virus that we are studying in our lab, like uh, around 10 to the nine, 10 to the nine, when nine zero uh, circulated in a in a single patient. That's quite a lot for a, for a population, okay? And so, as uh, the population is very high, there is also a very large number of, of mutant created, particularly, I would say, in virus that has a genome of RNA, because uh, <coughs> excuse me, many many families of RNA viruses, uh, you the polymerase does not have uh, the correction uh, proofreading uh, stuff. So it generates a lot of uh, of of mutants of mutants too. So you have a large number of population. So as the this amazing, even in imaginable number of viruses, then a large number of mutants, all, all the things will be uh, go through selection forces. And uh, now we now we try to comprehend that in a concept that I will um that I will try to explain to you that is a quasi species uh, population. This is a kind of I don't know if it is Latin it's just, um related to a concept that it is very important for understanding RNA virus and of course the process of selection. So there are sometimes very strong selection forces. For instance, our immune system, you know, we have an infection by rhinoviruses or uh, any respiratory or whatever virus. So uh, the immune system will select all of this uh, population of viruses, uh, many of them. Uh, may, of course, not all all the particles were uh, formed exactly as it should be, or they have many defective. There are also other talks that we are not going to talk today, which is what happened with the defective particles and, and all that. So first of all, imagine all that. Um, a, a very big population that is all the time selected by many different forces, you know? Uh, remember, outside and inside the patient or whatever species you are, uh, you are you are studying. So, for you to have an idea, for instance, uh, we analyze, you know, in our lab, uh, how virus in plasma, okay, uh, and how it is torn by selection and the the the, the progeny, it gets when it replicates, you know, um. So you have a virus in plasma by by a, a title of 10 to the 11, okay? Every 24 hours is the, is the half life. But, but you can change all population of HIV every six hours with, as I told you, pretty much a title to 10 to the nine uh, particles circulating in the patient. That is tons of... Uh, Tons of particles to be uh, unfortunately uh, circulating in independent. So this gives you an idea, you know, of what all these um, all these uh, all these uh, things that 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 the virus has to uh, has to face, and so. Um, Let's go to the quasi species. Let's go to the quasi species concept, uh, which is uh, very important. I will say that this is 
all due to one of my master, Professor Esteban Domingo from Centro de Biología Molecular Severo Ochoa in Spain. He was one of my professors. And, and so I think that was about when began to work that. I think it was by 1978, pretty much what they, they were studying the phase Q beta. It's a, it's a phase. Um, I think they developed a concept, but that by that time was not very well understood as it is today with all the all his well, his team and many others have uh, have done. So the question is, I don't tell you, I cannot tell you this is the sequence of hepatitis C, or this is not the sequence of polio. Okay. There's not such a thing, for example, if you have a, a scheme of that, you see, and all these drawing are mutations. That So when you get a population of viruses, uh, particular RNA viruses, you don't get a sequence like in the mammal, you say, okay, this is the sequence of such, okay? This is a, oh, uh, so I can understand, uh, let me forget, there is a swarm or cloud of mutants closely related genetically. That's why we call quasi-species. Okay, so um, in RNA virus that will you will see evolution in real time. For instance, if you see if this sequence is selected, one important thing is that they will carry, of course, some mutation that that can be an advantage. You know, for instance, if you have the stars and a, and an advantage to, for instance, to get a better, uh, better united to the cellular receptor or the cell virus uh, infects uh, or whatever other characteristics. But also, you know, this particular uh, strain carry other mutations like yellow here that maybe it's not really uh, defining characteristic, but it goes together with that since since this virus was selected. So uh, you don't have as uh, in the population all simple uh, uh, one genome. You have a swarm of sequence that now we call the sequence space, you know, and all this population is the one that is selected over by the selection forces. And so and you can continue this on. Maybe you can select this, and this will see uh, other selection of other virus. Uh, so it depends that are when the virus have to that. For instance, when you cross when a host to to another, for instance, in the influenza virus, when you cross, uh, for instance, the reservoir of avian viruses, I came to mammalian. Uh, species, there are many things that can be selected. For instance, how the polymerase uh, have the fidelity or less fidelity, more fidelity, and how this will be good or bad or whatever uh, in the in the virus population. So uh, that results in a, uh, each selection results in a new diverse population because they are not also exactly as the virus continue to replicate and evolve over time that uh, that select the variants that are positive selected as well as other closely related mutations that are around there. So this is the quasi-species theory, which is a framework where we can understand how uh, RNA viruses uh, evolved, and uh, this is a very important theory uh, nowadays. So, um, but as usual, everything has a limit, okay? So, uh, mut mutation has a limit that you cannot cross, because if you cross that limit, you know the, you lose the genetic information. So, uh, if mutation has a limited between the selection and also the survival of, of the population. So that's what we call the error thresholds, okay? 
So for instance, in, in families of RNA, where, where the RNA polymerase RNA dependent make a make a, the introduction of mutations, you know, I say since they don't have the possibility to correct that, okay, but it has a limit for that. So it is a balance of that. For instance, if you go here, you have uh, forget the below here, but the um, you will have for instance. Uh, so we have the genome size, and also we have the mutation, which is, uh, I think, uh, the mutation per site per, per, per round of replication. And so you will have single-stranded uh, RNA, which are pretty much the ones that, that make uh, more mutation. Then you go here, it's bacteria, which is uh, DNA. This is very, pretty, pretty, pretty stable. And so you have the RNA mutations, the RNA viruses have a, a rate of substitution per site that are a, a lot significantly more higher than, for instance, DNA viruses that, that you have here because they have a correction system, et cetera. And so, but it is not also that you can just mutate and stuff like that because if you see the, the error threshold, uh, when you see, you exceed. You know, you lose the ingenuity mutation, okay? But on the other hand, uh, if you are too concerned that that the uh, you don't have variability in the population, and remember, that's pretty much that way in theory also, if you are too conserved and there are no variability, you cannot survive the challenges of repeated uh, selection selection forces. So what viruses really do is they go in the edge of error three holes, okay? They don't pass it through, but they are trying to be there, having a variation, but not coming to the error Three holes, this can be done by doing many different experiments. So remember that we have uh, sometimes strong variation. You know, HIV, um, you can have 10 to the minus 2, 10 to the minus 3, substitution per cell per year, influenza 2. So uh, substitution per site per year in, in, in the genome, which is a pretty high uh, variation, okay? Imagine that variation in this, uh, this uh, RNA viruses that I mentioned, uh, they go one million times faster than our own evolution of a human species. So that's why you can see it in, a, a, in real time. But uh, so you are go to the error threshold, but it, I think it's a very concept to remember that it's a limit of that variation. So you go uh, playing on the ability of real-time variation and on the side, do not push the population through the error thresholds and lose it, uh, the, the information the information you have. So that's a very important concept on that. The other thing is that there are uh, what we call bottlenecks, uh, you know, in in the population as you can have, and you can see here, for instance, this is a, a population of viruses. Uh, you see there are uh, variation here, you have different uh, mutations, different proteins, some can be deleterious, some are, can be advantageous, and, and when it comes a selection process, it produces a bottleneck in the population that gives, uh, for instance, different distribution of the quasi-species that you have in the old, in the old population. So this bottleneck can be, for instance, when you uh, for instance, have neutralizing antibody. And if you don't have an escape of the antibody, sometimes, uh, for example, for escaping um, an antibody from the, the immune system, you need 
just changing one amino acid for another, this epitope can be completely destroyed. So, but there is a bottleneck. So you are selecting all these people on different distribution. You can see that what is important of the limit that, that you need variability also to evolve as a viral population. It can be, this is a classical experiment where you, you plague uh, for you that are not familiar, you have a cell culture and I can infect with the virus population. There is um, a process where I put a layer so the, the virus cannot travel around, so it goes around and make what we call a plague, uh, where you see as some kind of cytoplastic effect. But this is in an absolute selection. This is in vitro. In the lab, and then you put this virus to here, okay, only because this is was selected just by this is one virus that goes to, to the plague. Um, so I pass this to here, my repeated passes, and then get the plague, pass it through here. If this is an absolute of selection, you know, it's just a broad and uh, for the cell culture and the cells, this is the same cell. It will be a moment that the virus will not survive, okay? So, because uh, there are no, there are no variability, no, yeah, and so, uh, believe it or not, so you are all the time accumulating the deleterious mutation to at the end, so the condition exceeds the error threshold and and so as you do this, uh, excuse me, this kind of experiment, um, the this kind of experiment, the fitness of the virus is decreasing by accumulating the letterious the letterious mutation from a pass to a pass to a pass. So, in one hand, we need variability to get selected, and so this is pretty much you have a. Uh, uh, Many examples of Darwinian evolution that go through that. This is this is uh, how I played for you that on the right that, that you are not familiar with. Maybe you will see, for instance, I pick this plate and pass it, pass it, pass it. And the fitness is going down, it's going down, it's going down in the absence of, uh, of selection. And so variability is also very important for coming through many many selection forces, many bottlenecks that for sure uh, the virus will have. So, so how we can explain that? This is in the uh, in the quasi speed um, uh, theory. This is it's called uh, the Mueller racket. So. Uh, I think it's a metaphor. Uh, so, and how you should avoid the Mueller racket. There is symbolized here that in, in the thing I showed before, you know, the fitness you are decreasing, there are no sacrifices, homogeneous population. So, it's like in a, in a racket that, that you go by one, okay? You, you can go by one teeth, okay? So, this is the, the part that I, and, and, and and so accumulating the letter mutation, the letter mutation, the letter mutation. So, so you can see here how uh, infectivity goes down in an absence of selection. Since we are introducing a time more deleterious, deleterious mutation, this is what what we observe in, uh, I mean, in real life uh, uh, experiments. So this is called the Mueller racket. It's, it's a uh, Mueller was a college and it's a donor of him. And so this is a Mueller racket and while in the while studying viral population, we had to, I mean, the, the virus tried to avoid the Mueller racket. How, how to avoid the Mueller racket? Well, because we have substitutions and mutations, there are other ways you can, um, you can avoid the Mueller racket. One is what we call, there are two main mechanisms, might be other, but two main mechanisms that uh, that are different, sometimes complementary, sometimes not, 
but the to avoid uh, the Mueller racket. One is what we call recombination, which is uh, when you have a co-infection, for instance, a cell in a patient, uh, hepatitis C virus, two variants co-infect the, the cell. Okay, so both one. One is in blue that has a deleterious mutation here, but the ray, no, no, so here. Our um, one is brown, okay? So they co infect the same cell. But what happened is that when it comes to to to, to reproduce and know how to uh, what the polymerase does, it jump from one to another. So it comes from the blue and jump to the brown. So uh, this uh, jumping of the polymerase. Uh, because they are two strains that are very near, and so sometimes the polymerase uh, jump from one strain, you know, this is our RNA viruses, uh, positive sense. So you have two RNA very near, and so the polymerase that is polymerizing one and one and one RNA uh, uh, go, goes to the other. And so this is a recombination, and so since uh, this deleterious mutation was in the blue, but not in the, run, in the brown, they will not be in the in the progeny. So that's a way to avoid the Mueller racket. So to get rid of mutations that are uh, deleterious or that are not functional uh, for the virus. And um, other mechanisms that is different. Sometimes people get confused on that, okay? This is what I call the biology recombination. But this is different, which is reassorbent. That goes for for the viruses in which a genome is not just a, a strain, <coughs> excuse me, so not just a strain, you know, that the genome is several uh, molecules, <coughs> excuse me, so RNA. So this is a typical case of influenza viruses. You have eight segments of RNA, okay, ne negative, but, uh, minus RNA, and so, uh, this is what it happened in the on some of the pandemic, no, you know, unfortunately, but some of them. Um, so, what is it? You have most of the different uh, influenza viruses. You go by the avian reservoir, you know, they have all the types. You have more than 17, hemagglutinin, 9, neuraminidase, and all, six, all this kind of like playing cards, okay, have so many, many different. And so what, what happened here is that, um, so you have this kind of, of, of viruses, and in the human population, you have other uh, other strains that have a, its own genome, I would say, that is, that is uh, different. And so uh, what is calling is that uh, swine is a reservoir that has receptors in, in the cells that, that can be affected by the avian receptors. That's a kind of sialic acid. Uh, but the swine also have receptors that are good for um, interacting with a human strain. And so what you call here is a missing vessel. So where this uh, co-infection gives right a complete new virus that has segments of the virus, so proteins that come from the avian reservoir and some of the other reservoir, in this case, a human. So uh, you can get rid also of the Mueller racket because if I have a deleterious mutation, let's say here in this segment, but you, in the coming uh, progeny, I will have the green and not the brown uh, segment. So I get rid of the Mueller racket. So there are, and also viruses, believe me that the virus exploit all the genetic mechanisms that we know nowadays. And if there are more that I don't know for use, you will find a family of virus that, that use it, okay? So diversity of a viral population is important for survival. 
okay? It's important for continuous the evolution, okay? And the viral diversity is also important because diversity of a viral population permit you to avoid the Mueller racket, okay? And so that is an important concept to, to take in, in, into consideration, okay? But this is what I like the most, that uh, if I tell you, if I, if you can uh, make a summary of RNA virus evolution, is this beautiful book by Lewis Carroll, you know, it's, you know, Alice Through the Looking Glass, you know, where the Red Queen tells Alice, uh, here you have to run as fast as you can to be in the same place. Okay, and so that's what really um, this uh, this quasi species population pass through. You know, they try to move as fast as uh, as they can with the diversity they can, so to avoid uh, the Mueller racket. Sometimes there are pretty much, uh, as you see on the right very powerful selection forces that only few of the quasi-species are selected. Sometimes are massive infection of the viral. But here in, in virology in real time, you know, when, when we talk to substitution per sal per year in a genome, that it goes to 10 to the minus two, 10 to the minus three, this is real time. So. The why you have to run as fast as you can because the selective forces of nature in the environment that I mean outside the cell or inside the cell are so strong that you need variability and you need to change. So some part of the some quasi species will be will be selected. So Remember, if you study RNA viruses, the paradox of the Red Queen is the one that, that for me, is the best uh, way to think uh, RNA viruses because you had to run as far as you can. So you can see, for instance, you had the sample in the pandemic of COVID-19. Imagine the size of the population of these viruses and how all the processes of different continents, different population, different time, and how, you know, we, we I think that we don't, uh, to name the, to name the, the strain that we are rising and rising and rising today, I, I want to think that even the alphabet will be enough to, to put all the letters that, that, that you need. And of course, the virus is still today present. You know, the virus is not going, you know, although vaccination campaign, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the Red Queen paradox. So so this is the way we see uh, and have to see virus evolution. And this is also a very huge work done by, by my master, Esteban Domingo, uh, and his team to so many, so many years. And I recommend you, if you uh, are interested in quasi species theory, to read the, the paper by, by Esteban, uh, which are very interesting. And they give you a scope, you know, how to comprehend uh, virus, RNA virus evolution. But despite all this diversity, as I told you, there is a limit on how things are. Uh, so in one side, you cannot take everything you want because the, uh, there is a constraint also uh, on virus evolution. That's why that was really a very interesting question when I was there. For instance, why, why there are only three zero types of polio? It's all the vaccine, there will be more. But there is a limit, okay? There is a missile will have only one zero type. You know, uh, I was my, um, when I was young, we were saying, no, you know, hepatitis A has to be 
more than one zero type. And we try by all means to to show that it was uh, another zero type, but it was not. So and we made several papers. Although you can have genotypes, you have variation, you have huge uh, cloud uh, swarms of was species that complement each other, that recombine, that etc. There are constraints because the viral proteins has a function. So you can imagine in an infection, okay? You had to rely in a uniting with a cellular receptor. You will have to have signals of translation. You have signals of replication. You have a capsid that it has to be in a particular shape. There are tons of signals, tons of uh, physical, um, biochemical uh, stuff that is not a question of um, in, in, the, in just variation, variation, and variation. So there are constraints. And constraints are uh, also you can have changes in a protein, in amino acid that are really great for the body, produce an advantage, or change, change one amino acid that do not permit to function this uh, physical chemical uh, property. So be careful of thinking, okay, that a quasi species, there is variation, but it also limits. So Sometimes because the forces are really are really uh, powerful and the virus can not go beyond. Okay, so avoid the middle racket. Don't go outside the area threshold, and that's a protein has a lot to do with with that. The other hand, yes, you have a continuous evolution. Influenza is the as you see on the right. This is a Imagine the selection forces that that you have. The natural cause is is avian, you know, mostly water, wild, wild uh, waterfalls, uh, uh, you know, ducks, uh, goods, etc. And there are many, many, many different uh, influenza species that. But you see, influenza can infect. Imagine all that, and all the selecting forces that that come in in the range of hosts that you can you can infect. For instance, nowadays, uh, we have, we see us uh, H5A1, unfortunately, coming uh, for marine mammals, and and all this is, is really, uh, uh, really, really a big problem now, nowadays. So, yeah, but imagine the selection forces from the, uh, Influenza quasi species that you go through. Imagine different, you know, for instance, selection by immune system, uh, selections in the protein, selection by the host, different uh, uh, immune systems that you uh, will find in, in mammals and, and, and all that. So, uh, selection forces are pretty strong, but also. There is a limit, and why? That's why uh, we see, for instance, only three serotype of polio nowadays. All, always the, the three serotype are, are in the vaccines of polio that we give, that they give to us, and also the ones that are given today. Okay, so there are only three. So unfortunately, with that, we can make a vaccine with three serotype of polio and protect all our children. Okay. And so you see this process is uh, as complex as uh, as you can uh, as you can imagine. So uh, I was tempted to put a picture here, you know, it, it is a balance in the force, but you can imagine from a, from a very no uh, serial uh, uh, movie, but, but a question of credits and, uh, and all that. So there is a balance in the in, in the train. And it really is a balance in the force that uh we had to 
to take into consideration of the characteristics of the virus that 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 you study. You know, um, this is pretty much a experiment that we mix of viruses. Uh, this is a you know, when they introduced the rabbit to Australia, that was a complete disaster. This is uh, about 1938. They, they introduced the European rabbit to Australia and they pretty much destroyed uh, Australia. There was no, there was no, nothing uh, that can stop the, uh, the rabbit. There was no predator that preyed on them. And, and so, they say, well, you know what we can do is to infect with uh, some mix of viruses transmitted by mosquitoes. And so uh, they introduce a virus to, to, to get rid of the host in, in a way, okay? And so what happened? They did that the first day, 99% of the rabbit, pretty much, I think it was 98, say 98, 99 of the rabbit were the next generation, you know, but not all. Next generation, mortality dropped to 30%. So uh, the virus uh, is one thing, but also the host is another thing. There is, remember that it's always a relation, virus and host. So. This virus is also would not be a good strategy to kill them all, uh, or the viruses and the host uh, shape mutually their evolution. So uh, for, uh, at the end, this experiment didn't work. Okay, and so it is not not easy to do that. And there are so the virus evolution is a more. Uh, profound system that we see uh, in simple view. So virulence in that case, was a positive or negative trait? Well, you tell me, it depends, you know? Uh, so in case of virulence, you see, well, in the sarco so we have a huge viral load with a, a facilitate transmission to other codes, because more people, you know, and a reproductive number of two. Uh, this is a, a way to do it. But um, so this is a, a way, but other viruses go through a strategy that is complicated. Here you have Ebola viruses, which is a really big problem. This is a filovirus, it's a category four pathogen, uh, has some hemorrhagic fever that is terrible sometimes you know in history so the Ebola is uh, we know it's from many years ago uh, when I was a student say you know Ebola is a, a river when it when it comes to can, comes to Congo River so the, the but in this small town there were uh, an outbreak um, 95 percent of the people uh, when you came to this small town, this small community, uh, die of a terrible disease. Not all, but sometimes uh, some people sur survive. So, but why did not it spread that at, at that time? Because the hosts were dying so fast that the chain of transmission uh, gets stopped. Now, it is a uh, modern world will have other problem that Africa is not the Africa of 1940. This is 2022. You have roads, the national airports, and so the question is more complicated. So it depends. You tell me if it is good or bad. So you have the limits of there is a balance uh, in selection, a balance of a strategy and how we can design the strategies it depends on on the trait, depends on the family, depends on the genome, depends on the protein, uh, depends on everything. And so we can 
rely on many strategies that some of them are trying to push the value over the over the error threshold. You know, imagine when you, when we do antiviral therapy that uh, make uh, even more mutations in the viruses. What we what we try to do? Try to make them cross the error threshold or make they go to the racket mule, a mule racket to 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 the thing. But uh, remember, there is a balance in the in, in that, and that balance it goes by the two. You need to know the virus, but you need to know the host. Okay, and so it is not simple uh, as it seems. So, so far so good. So the with virus evolution, but why why don't see new viruses coming up in, in the biosphere? Okay, because it's a limit. Okay, so so far so good. This is the ones that we know around. Okay, so now. For instance, in the pandemic, in the in the pandemic, when the our Chinese uh, uh call it put the first sequence of SARS-CoV-2, we know it. We know in the moment it was a coronavirus, so corona coronavirus the family, and it was such a strange thing coming from from somewhere. It was not the first coronavirus that we know. Not not in animals, not in humans. Okay. So there is a limit um, and there is a constraint in evolution. So far, uh, today what we do, you know, we try to sequence uh, the virus that, that you have, in the, for instance, that is circulating in the patient. We sequence that and just with the sequence. Now, now we do it in, in my time, that was not possible, but the, and then with the sequence, pretty much, if you have the sequence, say, okay, this is uh, this is a new picornavirus, okay? But it's not a thing that came that we that we don't know. So because uh, there is a kind of the master sequence is a kind of conserve, okay? They can have brand new things, but in a limit because uh, evolution is constrained. So uh, when you have extreme alteration, you don't have, you will not face the selection forces. So, okay, that not um, things that that uh, you can evolve eternally without uh, having extreme alterations that uh, as far as we already, already know. So imagine that the constraints cuts of, uh, the genome itself of the virus, so you have you have to to make the cell, hijack the translation machinery, make your make your proteins, uh, you have to replicate, you have to interact not only with viral protein but with host proteins. You have genome signals that I say that has to be recognized by polymerase for initiate the replication. Uh, you have uh, so signs in the mRNA, uh, the poly A, adding of, uh, of, of your RNA, the RNA processing, you know, and all this has to die in a special uh, a range, okay? Special range of things, special range of moments in the, in the infection. So everything has to be ready in the right time at the right place. So other things that uh, constrain evolution. So how is your codon using? How you synthesize your protein? You compete with the cells or you don't compete for synthesizing the protein with the, with the cells, the RNA structure, or obviously the capsid. So, uh, but one thing that you will see here in virology, especially if you study RNA viruses, is that you can see evolution in the real time, you know, and that's, so you don't have to be millions of years or make inference of our colleagues that work, okay, mammal species or, 
or things like that. So there is a lot of change with an imitation. So for instance, uh, poliovirus can change, uh, make, make a substitution. It has not to be all the substitutions. There, there, there can be um, uh, silent substitution that don't change an amino acid or change, it will be selected. They change 2% of the genome in five days, as we know. So for us in the evolution of uh, uh, as a species uh, from from the near uh, species uh, the the our ancestors that are not uh, from the Homo uh, Homo sapiens uh, to us um, so uh, we change this two percent okay with the near I know Homo sapiens, so we share with them pretty much 98% of our genome, but this 2% that give us to uh, our genome, so it took 8 million years to change what polio virus changed in five days. That can give you an idea of the speed of the evolution of RNA virus and the selection process at the limit of the selection uh, that we have. So this is um, a wonderful topic that for sure we, with Sergio uh, and all the theme and these beautiful courses that I gave at the Instituto Pasteur uh, de Montevideo. Uh, for sure you will need a lot and I hope this introduction will give you really a good scope uh, 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 and spirit how you can situate in this uh this wonderful world well, and well i think i think you sergio martin and all these those our fellows and and friend for for well friend for giving these beautiful courses that 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 they give for for all of you and for allowing me the the opportunity to be with you to to give you an scope for from someone that that works in the in I mean in the experimental uh, field of, of virology. Thank you all. Thank you, Sergio. Muchas gracias. See you around.